Okay, so I made this coronavirus visualizer where you look at a map of the US and wherever you look, it brings up information about like the number of deaths and all that stuff. And a bunch of people in the comments were asking how I did that gaze interaction. So today we're gonna go over doing that. So I think we're just gonna make some cubes and when you look at them, some information is gonna pop up. So uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to github.com slash third dash Aurora and let's get this AR Foundation example downloaded. So hit clone or download, download the zip, and then let's open that up in Unity. Okay, so once we're here, let's open up the main scene. This is what we're gonna be working in. And then again, if you haven't been following along with the other videos, uh, you know, this video just literally gives us the ability to place an object on the ground with AR Foundation. So this is what we're gonna build from today. So let's go file build, set, build settings and let's switch our platform to Android or iOS. And let's just get this stuff set up to build out whenever we're ready. Okay, so let's go to player settings, and then the only thing I'm gonna really do here is just change our bundle identifier. Um, Matt dot, let's go gaze test two, because I did this once in practice. Okay, so cool, that looks good. Now the first thing we're gonna do is expand this content parent, and we're gonna make something to, we're gonna, we're gonna make something to where we, when we look at the cube, it's gonna display some information. So this cube, I think it's pretty small right now, so let's make this 0.5 across the board and then right click on here and create an empty game object. And this is gonna be called, I don't know, uh, section info. And then right click on this and create a 3D object quad. And this is gonna be our info parent. Why can't I spell info? Info parent, okay, cool. Um, let's see, so let's raise this up a little bit here, raise up the uh, section info, and then an info parent, let's rotate this 180, and let's make, eh, that looks good. Uh, we're probably gonna want to do some materials, so let's right click in the assets folder, and uh, create another folder called materials, double click that to open it, uh, let's create a material in here, and let's go, um, we'll call it trans, and we're gonna put that on our info parent, and then we're gonna make this, um, I think we'll go black with like 0.7 opacity, and then change rendering mode to transparent, cool. So we got a nice little see-through thing here. Now on this info parent, let's create a 3D object cube, and this is gonna be like a little uh, handle. I don't know. So let's go 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. That might be too much, 0.05. Okay, that looks good. And then if we scale it on the Y, yeah. Let's do that. And let's just put it right there. 0.50, is that okay? Okay, whatever. I think that's okay for now. Let's put our transparent material on that as well. All right, that looks all right. And then we gotta create some text. So. Uh, on the info parent, right click, create 3D object, text mesh pro, import TMP essentials. Okay, cool. So we got some text here. Uh, the text is distorted because our parent is scaled weird. So let's scale this by two on the Y. That should make it normal. And then click gizmos. And what we're going to want to do is scale this box to where it fits only on that info. Let's zoom in here. And we're going to want this yellow border just to fit inside that box. Okay, that looks good. Now on our text mesh pro, let's center everything. We'll set it to auto size, change the min and max to like zero and a thousand, something like that. And now our text will sit nicely in there, but it looks like it's behind our box. So let's move it out a tad. And then let's just make it say, I don't know, um, uh, here, yeah, here is some info. Cool, all right. That looks okay for now. Let's turn gizmos off to get that stuff out of the way. And now you'll see if um, we moved everything up on this Y axis. So if we scale it, oh, that's not what we want. Okay, so let's drag the info parent out of here. Section info, we want this anchor to be right at the top of the cube here. So let's go about 0.5 and now let's drag the info parent back in. And now if we scale this on the Y, yeah, it should look like it's coming out of the box. That is ultimately what we want. But where did our text go? And why is it not showing? Let's go down to the text and um, extra settings. There should be something for layer default. Let's just put that on one. 
now we should be in pretty good shape. And then let's make our cube, I don't know, I, I want to make it black maybe, or let's make it, let's make it blue, sure. Make a blue material, drag that onto our cube, and then let's go. Some kind of blue color, cool. Just to set it apart from the info. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now we need a script that's gonna be able to control this info. What we're gonna wanna do is, if the info is open, we're gonna interpolate its scale to one, 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 and then if it's closed, we're gonna interpolate the scale to all zeros. So inside our scripts, let's right click and create a new C-sharp script, and let's just call this info behavior. Okay, so let's put, this is gonna go on our cube because our cube is what's gonna take the gaze interactions because it has this box collider on it. So let's drag this script onto here and then let's open this up in um, Visual Studio. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna wanna have here is we're going to do serialize field and we're gonna have a transform and we're gonna call this uh, section info. And that's what we're gonna scale. And then we're gonna to want to set, we're gonna go vector three desired scale. And this is what we're going to interpolate to. Oh, you know what, so then we should probably set this to vector three dot zero in the first place because we want it to default to the info being off. So then inside the update function, we're going to go uh, section info, uh, let's see, dot local scale is what we're going to interpolate equals vector three dot lerp. And we're going to do section info dot local scale. And we're going to move that to desired scale by time dot delta time times a uh, speed. And so then at the top, let's set that speed. Usually uh, something like six or seven works. So const float speed equals six F. I don't think we need these using directives. Let's get rid of that. I don't think we're gonna need a start function because we're setting the desired scale here. And then the only thing that we really need is two public functions, two public voids. And the first one is gonna be called open info. And here we're going to set desired scale, what the heck, desired scale to vector three dot one. And then we can just copy this function and we can go close info. And we're gonna set it to vector three dot zero. So I think that should be all we need here. And we got that script on our cube, so that's good. Oh, so we need to drag in our section info, which is right here. Cool. Now, the other thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna want this section info to rotate on the Y axis and face the camera. So let's right click here, create a new C Sharp script, and let's call this face camera. And then this is gonna go on section info. So drag uh, face camera onto section info, open this up here. And then here, what we're gonna want is, let's just delete everything for now. Uh, we're gonna want a transform. We want a reference to the camera's transform. And then uh, we're gonna need, we're gonna need a vector three and we'll call it uh, target angle. And we'll just set that equal to vector three dot zero for now. And then, oh, we need to get a reference to our camera. So in the start function, delete that. In the start function, we're gonna go cam equals uh, camera dot main dot transform. That'll set that. And then inside the update function, we can do something like transform dot look at cam. So this is gonna make that whole element or this whole element face the camera, but we don't want it to move on the X and Z axis. So what we're gonna do is target angle equals transform dot local Euler angles. So now we have that current rotation saved in target angles. So then what we can do is just zero out the two axes that we don't want to move. So target angle dot X equals zero, and then target angle dot Z equals zero. And then we can just do transform dot local Euler angles equals uh, target angle again. Because now that should be everything that we want. And then let's just make sure this is working. So let's go execute in edit mode and then delete these unneeded using directives up here. And let's test this out and see what happens. Okay, so now if we grab our camera, oh, 
So that, we did here uh, camera.main.transform. We need to tag this AR camera as main camera. So once we do that, then we should be able to move our camera transform and this thing should move to look at it. But that does not seem to be happening here. So we might need to enable and disable this again. No. Let's try just removing that script at this point. Put it back on and then yeah, now it seems to be working. So now when we move this, you'll see that that element is always going to face the camera on the Y axis no matter uh, where we are in the world. Okay, so cool. That looks pretty good. Let's zero this back out. And then the last thing we need to do is actually get this gaze interaction working. So let's right click in the scripts folder, C sharp script, and let's just call this gaze. And then this is gonna go on our main camera. So let's click on the main camera and let's drag this gaze script onto there. And let's double click this to open. Okay, so now in here, the first thing that we're gonna want is, we're gonna want a reference to all of the uh, info behaviors that we have because we're gonna need to loop through them all and like turn them on and off. So let's create a list of, sorry, type in list and then if you right click quick fix, it'll give you the using directive. So system.collections.generic. So we're gonna want a list of info behavior and we'll call this infos equals new list info behavior. And then we need to load that list. So inside a start function, we can do something like infos equals uh, find objects of type, find objects of type info behavior. So that way we're only finding objects of type once on start because I don't think that's a very efficient thing to do. And then we can do uh, to list because I think that finds them, yeah, as an array, we wanna do to list. So quick fix uh, using system.link. That should get everything in a list. So that looks pretty good there. And then we're gonna want an update function and this is where we're gonna actually do this raycast. So inside our update function, we wanna go um, if physics dot raycast, I think it is dot raycast. And then we're going to set the origin is transform dot position. So that's the position of our main camera because this script is on our main camera and the direction that we want to do a raycast is the forward vector of the camera, which is that blue axis uh, in the editor. And then we want that to output a raycast hit and we'll just call it hit. And then here we want to do, let's make a game object uh, go and this is going to be the object that we hit. So hit.collider.gameObject. And now here where, here's where we need to do a check uh, if we've hit an object that is interactable. So I think the way that we're gonna do that here is um, if go.game, or sorry, if go.compare tag, we'll just use again a tag and let's call it has info. Um, and let's just make sure this is working. So print here. And then this has info tag, let's copy this and we need to go back to our cube. And this is what has the collider on it. So this is what we're gonna be interacting with. So we wanna tag this with that has info. So let's add a tag, paste in has info, cool. Uh, and then, oh yeah, cube, we're gonna tag this as has info. And then let's make sure this outputs something. So let's hit play and let's move our camera and uh, get the forward vector to point at this cube. So let's rotate it on the Y. And is that printing something? Yes. So you can see in the console when the blue vector is pointing towards that cube, it's printing here. Okay, good. And then one thing I noticed in play mode is this in landscape mode, this toggle is like giant. So let's go to our canvas and let's just make this smaller. Let's go 25 by 25, no. 35 by 35, whatever, that looks fine. And then let's just move this way up in the corner. Okay, cool. Hopefully that still works. It's a little bit small, but hopefully that works. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go back to our gaze script and we need to get these infos actually moving. So what we can do is we need, first of all, we need a function called open info. And we want this to take an info behavior. 
Okay, actually we wanna call this, let's actually call this desired info. And then we wanna loop through all of our info behaviors that we have. So for each info behavior, info in infos, and then we wanna turn off all of them, but only turn on the desired ones. So we can do something like if um, info equals desired info, we want to do info.openInfo. That'll set the scale to ones, or else we want to info.closeInfo. Okay, cool. So then here, if our game object has that right tag, we can go open info and we can pass in uh, game object dot get component uh, info behavior. Cool. So that handles opening everything, but we want stuff to, whenever we look away from a cube, we want all of the info behaviors, if they're open, to close. So uh, here we can do something like else, uh, maybe close all. So now we need to make a function uh, void close all. And then here we should be able to just simply um, loop through all of our info behaviors like we did previously. Let's get that formatted. And we can just do info dot close info. Okay. That should be all that we need. So let's go back in the editor and test this out. Uh, oh, you know, we're gonna need more cubes for this. So let's go back to the scene view and let's duplicate these and let's just put a couple, uh, I don't know. Let's just put a couple around like that. Okay, that looks good. And now we should be able to hit play. And we'll go back to the scene view and we're just gonna move the camera. Uh, so let's move it out. Let's turn it around here. And now we should be able to look at that and that pops up goes away. Beautiful. Everything seems to be working. Let's build this out and see what happens. Yeah, so if we look at the cube, the info pops up. Everything seems to be working pretty good. All right, so that's it. That's all I got for today. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys want to see in the next video. And with that, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.